Chicanos on the storm. Chicanos on the storm. Into this house we're born. Into the stage we're thrown. Like a dog without a bone, an artist without a brand. Chicanos on the storm. Yeah. Who are you? Enigma. Who am I? Rico Suave. Where am I? In the barrio streets of your mind, all chuckled line. Why am I here? Because, silly, you are confused and full of rage. <laughs> now, let's take our medicine. Just relax. Today is our Christopher Columbus two-for-one special. You may ramble on an extra hour if you wish. The doctor is always listening. Have an extra special visit. Nursey? Did you have a question? Yes, nurse, my question is this. What will happen to the word Chicano? The word Chicano? Yes. Will be replaced in the 90s. My God, with what? The new term is tropical, anal, miss. <laughs> I'm a tropical anal mist? Have a nice day. I'm crazy! I'm a crazy son of a bitch! I'm a loco desperado, I'm not so in the cabeza! I'm your postmodern Mexican hamburger helper! Brothers and sisters, run! Run for the hills! Have you heard the news? Madonna wants to play Frida Kahlo in a movie, man! Oh, it kind of pisses me off! I finally got myself a hero and she's gonna screw it all up for me! What the hell you looking at up there, man? Ain't you never seen a multicultural nightmare coming unglued right before your very eyes, huh? Cause I'm Spanish, I'm Indian, American Indian, I dances with wolves kind of Indian. Oh! I'm a walking, talking, Grand Rider's dream, baby. Whoa! Is that the LA festival in my pants or did I just cash my NEA check? Ignore the dents, ignore the critics. They don't understand my sensitive, multicultural, multi-personality ways. How can they understand it? I don't understand it, and I wrote this shit during a commercial. I never read Kafka. I never read Tolstoy. I don't even know the words to La Bamba. I'm a Chicano trapped inside the Beverly Center, and I can't get out. <laughs> I'm tired of being a whore for your laughter. I want your freaking respect. I want you inside of me this very moment. The pit of my stomach feels like a Marquez novel. Love in the time of colorization. So I bought me one of those 99 cent virgin in Guadalupe candles the other day. And the little virgin's got a price barcode attached to the bottom of her feet, right there above the little angel. That little fella that's held her up all these years now looks like a zebra. So I joined me one of those benevolent Hispanic organizations like Maldef or Lulac. This one's called Mocos. <laughs> it stands for Mexicans or Chicanos or something. <laughs> we don't have any bylaws. We're just trying to keep our noses clean. We're trying to maintain our chili eating ability. I wanted to be white when I was a kid. I wanted to be white like this jacket. I wanted to be white like my little pal Joshua. That sucker was white, man. <laughs> he had little purple veins popping out of his little head. He was my little gringo trophy, he was. 
It's not that I was ashamed of who or what I was, no siree. I was proud to be African American. <laughs> And I wanted to be white for simple reasons, for disciplinary reasons. White kids never got whipped. We were always getting whipped at our house. My old man could drive a car, turn around, and hit 10 kids with one swipe. Boom, boom! I went to kindergarten thinking my middle name was Cabron. Over at Joshua's house, his mother would always tell us to hush. <laughs> Everybody hush! I love the sound of that word, man, but I never did quite grasp the concept. Because over at our house, it was Cayete Los Ego! If you said a cuss word at Joshua's house, his mother would wash out your mouth with soap and water. If you said a cuss word at our house, you got your mouth washed out with jalapenos. After I got in trouble at my house, I used to run over to Joshua's house, call his mama Puda just to get a soapy rinse job. <laughs> I never, ever understood the bedtime stories we were told as children either. Well, like most kids, we'd get tucked in and we'd say our prayers, but here's where the story differs. Then our aunt would come in the room, the aunt with no teeth and a faint mustache, <laughs> and she would proceed to tell us the wonderful folkloric bedtime story of La Llorona! La Llorona killed five children in her sleep. <laughs> Mijo! Tonight I'm going to tell you about La Llorona. Esa muchacha took her little mocosos down to the river and she drowned the cabrones. <laughs> Ay, que fuerte la mujer mexicana, mija. <laughs> now you go to bed, mijo. Sweet dreams, mijito. Don't forget to pray to La Virgen. And don't forget about La Llorona. And then they wondered why we peed the bed at night. I was a child prodigy of the Chicano movement. My instrument was my mouth. One night, true story, Cesar Chavez, president of the United Farm Workers of America, he comes over to our house for dinner, an auspicious and true occasion. And my mother whipped up all this fanciful Mexican food with her very own hands, tamales, beans, and rice, all laid out right there in front of Cesar. And he didn't touch a lick of it. He was fasting that night. <laughs> I recognized a window of opportunity and I asked him if I could have his chili relleno. <laughs> it was mistook as a sexual advancement. <laughs> I was sent to my room with no dinner and that night in solidarity with Caesar, I fasted too. <laughs> The Chicano movement ended for me the day my parents got a divorce. I remember very clearly my daddy pulling his Volkswagen van out of our driveway. My old man was Cesar Chavez to me. He was Che Guevara too. Come to think of it, he was always pissed off because the front lawn looked like a jungle. <laughs> Something happened to me that day. I quit wanting to be white. I had finally come to grips and happily embraced my Japanese heritage. <laughs> I would like to dedicate a little song to El Movimiento and to my parents. Bob Dylan for the United Farm Workers Union. Decolores! Decolores at los campos de la primavera!